Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have one of my favorite watch, a Tudor. Uh, it's a special collab because uh, a vintage Tudor, you will see there is a collaboration you see there on a crown with Rolex. So basically this is a Tudor watch in a, in a Rolex case. And to me, this is one of the most beautiful combination with the Oyster case from Rolex with this beautiful angle on the case and the design from the Tudor especially this vintage design with the rose logo on the top. You can see the case back there from Rolex. So let's put the watch on a time grapher and we see the watch, the result is not good with amplitude quite low at 219, losing 49 seconds per, per day. So yeah, this watch need a, a good service. So let's see if we can get a, a nice result on a watch and if we can get this watch uh, nice running again. Okay, so let's open. You see on the case back, Montre Tudor SA. Uh, and here you can see the movement, which is signed by uh, Tudor and 17 ruby, which is uh, 17 joules. Okay, so let's start to disassemble the, the movement by removing first the two case clamp. I really like this uh, vintage Tudor and I'm very excited to share this watch with you because yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Tudor and Rolex and uh, these vintage watches, I found them amazing. I really like the case. I always like the Oyster case from Rolex with uh, the the round round angle on the case. And this dial, look at this dial from, from Tudor. It's so nice with this matte black and this big rose as a top, as the top. That was a logo from Tudor. Uh, obviously now it's a shield, but before it was a rose. And this model is uh, very special because you have a big rose and uh, you can see it's a full metal. Uh, full metal uh, logo and actually there is quite a lot of details uh, on the logo on the rose so yeah i don't know yeah probably spend quite a lot of time just doing this uh, small logo so okay so now i remove the dial pull it aside just to make sure it doesn't get damaged and uh, we will start on the disassembly you can see on this side that as well there is a Tudor sign on the movement remove the cannon pen the cannon pinion with a presto tool so let's move back to the other side. First, obviously, you see the, the movement is running. We saw the result was not really good. So first, I need to release the power. So I'm unwinding the watch. Perfect. And you can see it stopped straight away. So it means that there is a bit of friction in the, in the movement. So I will remove this beautiful balance assembly. You can see with the nice blue uh, hairspring, just to make sure it doesn't get damaged. So I get it out of the way straight away. And uh, first, next time, move on a pallet fork. Here we go, just checking if everything is okay on a pallet fork. Removing next the train of wheel bridge. Removing the screws. You can see there is a nice uh, Tudor inscription on the, on the movement. And you can see on the, on the left there, 1156. That's, that's actually an ETA movement. So Tudor at the, at the time, uh, actually until very recently, was uh, not producing his own. Or oh, you can see there, there is a lot of play there in a, in the mainspring. So we'll have to address this issue and we can see a lot of wear there. So I was saying that, yeah, Trudeau was not producing his own movement. Uh, they was uh, using ETA movement. Probably, I'm not sure, but I guess there was, I don't know, uh, like if we take a, a based ETA movement, maybe they are a bit custom made with uh, some nice finish or some like different touch, for example, Found the shock, uh, shock setting uh, on the balance a bit different, probably from, from normal. Uh, so yeah, basically there was customizing an ETA movement until very recently actually they started to make their own uh, own movement in Tudor. So they were using Rolex cases, ETA movement, and obviously their own uh, dial and own, own touches on, on the watch. Uh, but yeah, I quite like actually, like I said, especially the, the Rolex uh, and case and the uh, this beautiful dial from uh, from Tudor. Okay, so we can see there there is a, a sub bridge if you want. This which is actually quite hard to remove. I'm just going to use a, a screwdriver there to to lift it gently because it's very hard to remove. Okay, and this is just keeping you see this uh, center wheel uh, in place. Okay, just removing the center wheel there. Just checking everything is okay. There we have the screw for the setting lever on the other side. 
So we turn the movement uh, on the other side. So we move to the dial side and we are going to check and disassemble the keyless work. Okay, there. Oh, what's that? You see, there is a, a jewel on a, on a bench. That's uh, not normal. Uh, so it means that there was a loose uh, spring like on a, on, a, on, a, on a jewel setting. So yeah, that's very strange. That never happened to me before. So I'm checking, yeah, it looks like it's coming from this side. So I just put it back in place for now, but that's very weird actually. Yeah, just uh, I did not touch it and it already came loose. You can see there is uh, in a gold part, like there is in, uh, I put it back in this uh, spring, but yeah, I don't know why it fell down. I guess the previous watchmaker didn't install it properly and it, they just fall down. Okay, so that's the setting lever spring that we just, you see the keyless work is pretty standard. Removing the yoke spring, that's a strong spring, so we use something to keep it in place just to make sure it doesn't fly away. The yoke, and yeah, winding stem, the cannon pinion, uh, sorry, the clutch, and uh, the winding pinion. Perfect, you can see all the parts there, so it's a pretty standard movement, yes, there is no date or no, no extra complication. I'm just cleaning the the jewels with uh, a, a piece of peg wood there, just to make sure I remove any excess uh, of dried oil or grease that was put on the watch before. And uh, yeah, that will help remove the, the oil when we put it into the cleaning machine. Okay, put back the balance assembly on the, on the movement, just to make sure it stays safe during the, the cleaning process, as always. Perfect. Secure it with the screw. So actually, if you want to, to start this hobby like me, yeah, if you want to start uh, uh, fixing watches or maintaining watches, doing maintenance on watches, I think, yeah, you see a movement like this, like uh, obviously this watch costs a, a bit of money, but you can watch on a, you can work on a, on a simplest watch, like a watch, uh, just a simple movement, like a simple ETA movement. That's, I think is the best, the best uh, way to start. There is not too many parts. Um, it's pretty simple. And as well, if you have anything wrong, if you lose a part, if you break a part, if uh, one part is uh, totally broken or, or wear down, uh, there is actually, you can find spares more easily on ETA movement. Uh, so I think that's uh, quite a nice way to start. Okay, so I, I removed the main spring there. Everything is disassembled. So I put everything into a, a cleaning basket. And uh, all of this will go through the, the cleaning cycle. There we go. All the parts are in this basket, and that will go in the washing machine. Okay, so if you like the video, you, I will really, really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel because there will be many more videos to come. And put a like if you like the video. That will uh, help grow and keep me motivating on, uh, on my channel. So thank in, thanks in advance for your help. Okay, so we did the first step of the cleaning. So that was a, a, in a cleaning solution. And now we are wrenching, removing the excess. You see through it there. And it's going to go through two uh, steps of uh, wrenching in a wrenching solution. So now we are wrenching. In the last, actually, that's the second step of the wrenching process, removing the excess. And the last step of the cleaning will be like uh, eating the parts so that they can dry. There we go. Now the parts are fully dry and we can uh, carry on doing the reassembly. Perfect. So now we clean everything and let's see if we can get something good on this movement and see if we can get the watch uh, nicely uh, with an, a nice running again. Okay, I just removed the old uh, ring. I mean the old uh, seal, sorry. I'm just removing the bezel there because all the parts are going to go into the ultrasonic cleaning machine. Removing the glass there. This glass, I will keep it because it's really annoying to find. It's a very special glass. We saw that I saw that there is a problem with the with the crown. Actually, it's not screwed down perfectly. So I will remove the tube and change it because it looks like the thread is uh, pretty worn off. So I'm uh, cleaning in ultrasonic machine there the parts. Generally, I clean them for like 20 minutes just to remove any uh, any excess uh, dirt on it. Okay, so let's uh, rewind the, the mainspring first. So for that, I use a, a winder from version, a mainspring winder. 
Okay, you can see I'm winding the mainspring. The last part there, I need to go back inside the, the winder. There we go, perfect. You can see there the spring is fully wind and ready to go back into the mainspring barrel. Put a bit of grease on the bottom of the barrel and I can introduce, plop, there we go. I introduce um, the mainspring, just putting a bit of grease there or oil uh, where we put the barrel arbor. We go, put the barrel arbor in place, perfect. Lubricate the top and we can put the lid with a bit of grease before, obviously, because we want to have everything nicely lubricated. There we go, perfect. And we put it in this little tool just to close the main spring barrel, just to close the lid to make sure. There we go, just, just a gentle push on it. And it's closed and ready to go back on the watch. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to proceed to the lubrification on the shock system. You can see there, I remove the, re remove the little spring. It's a, a bit different compared to uh, to the most of spring that you can find on uh, on watches. It's a, a different different setup, but it's quite easy to use actually this one. So I treated the both parts in epilam. Um, now I'm clean, I'm drying them and putting a drop of oil in the middle of the stone, right in the middle there, just to make sure the drop is placed uh, in the center. And there we go. Now I put back the second part on top of it and I can put, put it back on the balance. There we go. And now I can close the spring just using two tweezers there to make it rotate in position. It's, uh, yeah, you need to be go very... Yeah, there we go. Perfect. It's in position. Let's do the same. Just, you see, I open it. I, I twist it a bit. Now we open. Get back uh, the stone. Same process. We are going to uh, clean it, put it in a pilam, uh, and uh, put a drop of oil on in the middle. So there uh, is a cleaning with a bit of radico just to remove any uh, excess oil that's uh, remained. Now I'm drawing it from uh, the epilam treatment, putting the oil in the middle. Perfect. And Dig back the stones together and I can put it back on the mechanism. So like that, we'll have the balance assembly, which is fully lubricated from both sides. Just closing the spring there. You see, up, oh, there we go. Now it's, I twisted it, it's in position. Okay, I did an epilant treatment as well on these two parts, just cleaning the pivot because we put some lubrification a bit later on during the assembly. Okay, now I'm putting some oil uh, where we're gonna put the uh, main spring ball assembly. There as well, we're gonna put the screw for the setting lever. Okay, putting the center wheel. I'm putting the main spring ball that uh, was previously reassembled. Some oil on top of the center wheel because you can see come on this uh, center jewel there of this uh, intermediate bridge. Go putting the screws. So yeah, on some of these ATA movement, you can find that this uh, bridge, like this in between bridge, yeah, it was different design. And you remember there was a lot of plays on the on the main spring ball. I mean, uh, yeah. So I just uh, used um, my uh, my stacking set just to hammer the hole to reduce the hole. And you can see there the hole is not fitting anymore. It's actually, I, I make it too small, which is normal. So now with a brush, I'm opening, opening the hole just a tiny bit. Okay. And there we go. You can see there now is fitting. So perfect. I just make it a tiny bigger. You can see there, there is a bit of play, but not too much. Obviously, I need to put the screws first just to make sure the bridge is uh, fully in place. And normally, if everything is okay, just putting a bit of oil there because yeah, it's turning, and you can see there the play disappeared. So this play there on the on the main spring ball is very bad because if you keep it, it will ruin the amplitude of the watch. You will have some friction between the parts. You will have some extra wear. You can see already it's actually some wear on the top. Uh, that was because of the play that you had on the, on the main spring ball. 
So with this fix, uh, yeah, it will be uh, it will be over. So the watch should run pretty uh, pretty smoothly now. Okay, so I'm assembling now the train of wheel. I put all the wheels now, putting the bridge on the top. We just make sure I align all the all the jewels with all the pivot points. There you go. So there, I always use a tweezer and a, a plastic uh, stick just to make sure. I put a gentle pressure on it and just make I touching each wheels to make them fall into the hole. And you can see now everything is aligned because when I'm touching, when I'm twisting the main spring ball, everything is turning. Okay. Putting the screws. Now we can focus on the top where we will have the crown wheel. So like I said, this movement is pretty straightforward. Remember that the screw of the crown wheel is river threaded when it's uh, in the center. Putting the click spring, this nice little copper uh, click spring. Lubri lubrificating always need to oil like the pivot point from the click spring. And then now We have the ratchet wheel. So this is one that was, you see, created some wear on a plate underneath. But now that uh, there is no play on the, on the main spring barrel, yeah, it will not touch. So it will not wear anymore and uh, it will not reduce, uh, it will not add any friction on the movement. So the watch should run better, yeah. Okay, so now we move on the killer's work side, where I had some lubrication on the, on the winding pinion and the clutch there on a winding stem. That I will insert. There we go. Perfect in position. Putting the setting lever. You can see this movement actually is uh, pretty straightforward. Perfect. I, I screwed back from the other side. I don't really like uh, like uh, I said before. I don't really like this kind of design where we will have a screw on the other side. Pretty uh, difficult to put in place. But yeah. There we go. Put the yoke there. Greasing all the points, you see that's all the points that will be in contact metal to metal with a lot of friction. So I use a grease, this blue grease, which has a, which has a higher, uh, higher viscosity. Um, so the part will not wear down and will run like a, it will be a bit smoother, a smoother to run. Okay, put the, the spring there, which is adding this uh, tension between the parts. I'm lubric lubricating all the pivot points where I can add now the wheels. Putting the cannon pinion, friction wanted, you see there, I have to apply a bit of uh, strength just to click it in place. And the last couple of parts from the keyless works. Okay, perfect. And that's the last parts which come on, on top of the minute wheel. Just need to make sure I align it and put the two little screws, which are very small, these screws. Always more difficult to, to, work, on, to work with small screws than uh, bigger screws. Okay. We do the lubrification of the different pivot points. And you can see one is actually has a, a capstone there, which is uh, all by a screw. I really struggle to take this part. I don't know why, but yeah, it doesn't want to cooperate with me. Yeah, that's it and uh, put a drop of oil in the center and we just put it back in place where it belongs. Now it's uh, nicely uh, lubricated. Perfect. Okay, so I think we are done from this side. We are gonna do the same on the other side. First, do the lubrification of the different jewels. This one as well, like the other side, uh, is a capstone with a, in place with a screw. This one is just it's coming out a bit uh, it's more easy than the other one. It's easier than the other one. Okay, just put it in place after uh, adding a drop of oil. This little screw there, there we go. Okay, so now everything is uh, lubricated. We can put the pallet fork. So put the pallet fork in, uh, in the jewel. Put the pallet for uh, the pallet for cock. On top of it, just need to make sure, like like every, all time, just make sure everything is aligned. Perfect. It's in place. 
I really like the gold color of the shock setting stone that you see underneath. Put a bit of a wind. Just check. Yes, it's clicking. That's the first check. Perfect. So it means the power is coming to the pallet fork. We are good. Lubri now I'm uh, adding some oil, lubricating the pallet fork. So that's why you remember we did an epilam treatment on there. Because yeah, we added the oil. And now the moment of through, see if the movement will start by adding the balance wheel. Oh, wow, easy, very easy. I just uh, almost threw it in place and it just started straight away. The amplitude doesn't look too bad. Just uh, putting the screw there. Okay, I will let it run for a couple of hours and uh, generally I let it run for 24 hours and see what we are getting. Okay, so you remember the tube on the, on the case was, uh, the thread was worn down. So I got a new tube. I'm putting some uh, thread, uh, some special glue for the thread. Just putting back the new one on the case. There we go. With a brand new thread. So that should be better. And actually after 24 hours, I was not really happy with the result. I just put it on a time grapher and I found the amplitude was not high enough for me, it was just below 250, so which is okay, -ish, but yeah, that's a watch I want to keep. And uh, I want I wanted to have running, uh, yeah, running pretty good. So I, I, I wanted to have a higher amplitude. So what I decided to do is um, see if the program is coming from there. I, I want to change a mainspring and put a new mainspring because I saw when I disassembled the mainspring was okay, but it was a bit out of shape, a bit flat, like, uh, so maybe it was a bit tired. So let's see if we can change, uh, change the mainspring. It's not that complicated to do actually, because I don't have to disassemble everything. Just rem removing here the bridge, the, the, the barrel bridge. Just removing the mainspring barrel there. We will remove the, the old mainspring and uh, we put a new one. Okay, here is a new one. Just pressing it down into the into the barrel. You can see the blue side always, most of the time, goes on the top, depending on some watches, but 99% uh, of the Swiss movement goes on the top. Just putting the arbor back, closing the assembly. Obviously, I re-oil and re-grease everything. And we just put it back, so, okay. We'll see a bit later on, see if we can get, uh, we let it run and see if we can get a good result on the watch. There we go. Just putting back the screws. Just need to put back the click and the ratchet wheel. And we should have a runner. Okay, putting a bit of a wind and I can see already straight away that uh, it's beating a lot harder. The amplitude is, is a lot higher. You can see it by, uh, by high. Yeah? Okay, so carry on putting the hour wheel, the hour wheel, sorry. Little disc uh, spring there. And we put back this beautiful dial. There we go. So you can see Tudor Oyster, obviously. So it's uh, like Rolex, Oyster was uh, made for, so it was a watch which was uh, watertight at the time, one of the best uh, watertight watch. Just cleaning the dial, I did a gentle polish on the hour marker and the logo, polish on the hands, just to give them a, a bit of a shine and a, an extra shine. On the hour, minute and second hand, you see. Perfect. And now we're gonna put back the hand on the, on the, on the movement. So first the hour hand, and just press it in place gently. We'll align it to midnight. And we can put the minute hand. Same process, just need to make sure we align it to midnight. There we go. Just press it in place. Perfect. Just checking, you see when at nine. Yeah, perfect, the, the hands are aligning perfectly. They're not touching each other, they're not touching the dial. And at midnight, yeah, pretty nice. And the last hand, the second hand. Just same, press it in place, perfect. Okay, K 
can see the crystal, I said, it's pretty annoying to find. So what I will do, I will polish uh, crystal. I use this compound, which is specially made for, uh, for crystal. And I will uh, just polish it uh, with my machine. Okay, so now we focus on, uh, on the crown. So the crown, the thread was worn down there as well. So I got a new crown and a new stem because the stem as well was, uh, was a bit rusty. So put a, a new gasket on the crown. I just put it on a, on a new stem, which is way too long, but we are going to adjust that a bit later. You can see there the, the crystal is, uh, looks much nicer after, uh, after a nice polish on a machine. Okay, we put back the movement, the movement in the case. Just put the spacer ring around to make sure you see with this groove is aligned where we're going to put the, the winding stem just to make sure I align everything together before I introduce uh, the winding stem. There we go, which is, looks very weird with this long winding stem there. Okay, I put uh, the two case clamps so like that the movement will be uh, fully secured and in place and after the so next step will be to work on this uh, weird looking winding stem there which is way too long perfect the second one is in place there we go now the movement is nicely and secured okay so i measure i mark the distance that i need to cut the winding stem i will cut it with a, a pair of pliers There we go, just uh, cutting it, perfect. We just file the end a bit because when you cut it, it's not perfectly uh, flat and it doesn't go very well. The thread doesn't go very well in the crown. So just file it a bit and you can see there, well, mistakes. I did not uh, calculate, obviously. I had to, to calculate, I had to go to, up to the crown, yeah? So I had to cut a bit uh, extra there. Okay, I did the same process. I measured, cut file and this time let's see yeah that's much better just before because obviously after we have to screw it and here is a result of the watch on the time grapher after some adjustment you can see the watch is running plus one minus one it's running at, uh, around zero so i'm pretty pleased the amplitude at 315 is uh, perfect and the bit error i like to get it on this type of watches below one so this is uh, just acceptable for me but it's fine so yeah, now I have a watch with a good amplitude, which is uh, keeps the time very well. And here is a finished product on my uh, on my wrist. This watch are beautiful again. The combination of the Rolex Oyster case and this beautiful Tudor. I wish Tudor would bring back this beautiful uh, rose logo. So here is my two watches. I have the ma manual one that I just uh, done, and uh, I have an automatic version as well. Okay, I hope you liked the video and uh, I see you next time on my next project. Bye-bye.